Hey, welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm doing something here today I never could do with my Jeep before. And I'm using the big truck stop nozzle to fill up my Jeep with diesel. And this is pretty amazing because the Jeep comes with a discriminator in the stock Jeep that doesn't allow you to put these large nozzles in. So I've had to pay a lot more for fuel because I wasn't able to use truck stops when I've been on my overlanding trips. I also wasn't able to use my jerry can without modifying the spout on that, and I won't have to do that anymore. I didn't need much fuel, but I wanted to make sure everything worked after I got this done. So what comes stock in the Jeep is called a discriminator, and it's a part that's inside the filler tube and I removed it. And if you want to modify your Jeep so that you can use the, tr the nozzles at the truck stop, the big nozzles where the big boys fill up, check this video out. I'll show you exactly how I did it. And you may have a better way, but you might like my way too. All Jeep Eco Diesels come with a discriminator installed inside the fuel filler tube. The discriminator prevents you from accidentally putting gasoline in your Eco Diesel. Putting gasoline in the Eco Diesel can be a tremendous problem just to remove whatever gasoline you put in there. Or if you did run it, run the engine with the gasoline, it could blow your whole engine up. And it could cost you an engine rebuild. I wanted to remove the discriminator because I like to go to the truck stops and fill up because I can get cheaper fuel. I can pull in easier to the truck area with my trailer. And also it makes it easier for me if I need to use my jerry can because the jerry can spout does not fit in the Eco Diesel's discriminator filler tube. So if you're the kind of person that will never go to a truck stop to fill up your Eco Diesel, don't do this modification, don't bother. Or if you're the kind of person that doesn't trust themselves to always grab the diesel pump instead of the gasoline pump, don't do this modification either because you might end up in a lot of trouble. In order to remove the discriminator from the Eco Diesel fuel filler tube, you have to remove the fuel filler door. I removed the tail light and that gave me access to the tabs that hold the fuel filler door housing in and also the three screws that attach the diff line to the fuel door housing. The screws on the diff line are very difficult to get at, but not impossible. Once you remove those, you can swing the diff line out of the way, and then it's detached from the fuel door housing. I was able to reach in with a long screwdriver and depress two of the tabs on the fuel door housing while simultaneously pulling it out. Getting those two tabs loose allowed me to remove the fuel door completely. The only thing holding the fuel filler line to the fuel filler door is a rubber gasket, so that removes very easily. There are two tabs that hold the discriminator into the fuel filler tube. I attempted to release those tabs and slide the, the discriminator out of the fuel filler tube, but I realized that was not going to happen while the fuel filler tube was mounted inside the Jeep. I decided to remove that section of the fuel filler tube and bring it over to the bench to work on it. That required loosening a hose clamp and also taking a nut off a bracket that holds it inside the Jeep. The next thing I did was remove the wheel well liner so I could access the nut on the bracket and also the hose clamp. I was able to get one hand on the rubber hose and one hand on the metal filler tube and twist it enough to get it off. Here you can see sitting on the tire the fuel filler tube removed from the fuel filler line. So here's what I've got so far. I removed the tail light. I disconnected the def filler line by removing the three screws. I removed the fuel filler door. I removed the wheel well liner. And I removed the metal section of the fuel filler line with a discriminator in it. And now I'm going to take that over to the bench and work on it where I think I'll have better luck getting that discriminator removed from the fuel line. So here is my fuel filler portion of the fuel filler pipe that I took off. It has this bracket that holds it on. The hose clamp goes around there. This is the end where now this is where I'm going to finish up on this job. This portion of the end here has to come out and inside there you can see that's the discriminator down inside. That is a discriminator that stops 
the full-size diesel hose from getting in there. I didn't see any good, really great information on the internet about how to do this, but if I take this part out, that's going to let me uh, use the big diesel nozzles at the truck stop. And a lot of times you can find fuel cheaper at a truck stop at the truck part of the truck stop, not the car part. So you can get a little cheaper fuel once in a while if you're able to use those big nozzles. Hey, if you're finding any value in the video, give me a thumbs up. Consider hitting that subscribe button and definitely leave a comment. Maybe you have a better way, some suggestions how I could have done this job better. So I'm usually towing my X-Venture X-V3 trailer. I'd like to be able to pull up where the trucks pull up. It's just easier. I don't have to go over there where the cars are. Go right to the, where the trucks go. I'll be able to fuel up over there. But there's two tabs holding this in. This end part. And this is all metal. So there's a tab on this side and a tab on this side. So I tried a little bit and distorted it a little. Trying to get it out while it was still in. It's still connected over in the in the the vehicle. So I wasn't having much luck getting this collar with the tabs out of the filler tube. So I kind of tried a different approach. I'll show you. What I did was, if you can see, this is the tab, the plastic tab here, and this metal holds it in. What I did is I kind of stretched this metal up because this plastic tab would be digging into this metal. So I pulled this metal up. Is I'm going to try to get something in here on this edge and pry it apart. After I stretched this metal out, I was able to get my small screwdriver in. I went to the next size screwdriver, prying this out. Now I'm up to my big screwdriver. It's definitely moving now there we go okay there it is so it looks like there's some tabs right here so there we go it's what they call a discriminator so i got the metal tuned up on the filler pipe on the slots here and they are different sizes then on the filler neck tabs are different sizes too so i got this in i got the right tab i got the, the big tab lined up on the big notch and the small tab lined up on the on the small notch and now i'm gonna whack it with the uh, rubber mallet here and see if it goes back in Okay, now I got it all back together. It's a lot simpler now. Just a big gaping hole so tons of diesel can go right in there. Uh, now I got to put everything back together. So the first part of getting everything back together was reattaching the metal portion of the fuel line to the rubber portion of the fuel line down below, which just required inserting this metal portion in down there and tightening the hose clamp after it was fully inserted. Also, it required attaching the bracket to that stud and putting the nut back on. Now it's time to get the fuel filler door back on. Fuel filler door gets this rubber ring. That's how that looks. The flat parts on the back. The fuel filler door has this little notch sticking up and it goes into this notch on the car, on the vehicle right there. So that will line up perfect. And all it is is just plastic tabs holding it in all around. So I've taken this in and out and hopefully these plastic tabs on these things only have a useful life of so many you know so many times can you take them in and out hopefully it stays in nice and tight and then the def goes in this hole diesel this hole and on the back there's three screws and that's what holds the def on there's a bracket around the def uh, line and that's what holds that on those are going to be a little harder screws to get but hopefully now got this all tight tiled it tightened it tightened up and the store will go right on hopefully since i took the tail light out i can reach through wow all right i can live with that now hopefully i broke a little piece of plastic out on this plastic ring and hopefully i don't get a air leak or something that gives me a warning light might put a little jb weld or something on that if i have to but um otherwise that all looks like it's back together here's the fuel filler cap make sure this goes back on like it's supposed to that goes on well that's cool now i just got to hook up the def put the tail light back in put the fender back on and i'm all set all right i got everything back together here's the new opening New large size opening, so I can go to the truck stop. I'll have to start the Jeep up, try it. Tail lights back in. Um, pretty difficult getting the uh, three screws in the def line back in. Got that done. Everything came out pretty good. I probably did one extra step I shouldn't have done, and that was taking the body panel off inside here. Anyways, hopefully I'll put together a pretty good video. If you want to do this, get it done. It'll be a little easier for you. I kind of was flying blind here. Everything's back together. I'm going to have to go down to the parts store, get some pins to hold the, the uh, fender well back in, push pins, and that'll be it. Anyways, hopefully next time you see me, you'll see me at a truck stop filling up with the big boys. So thanks for watching. I appreciate you checking out the channel. I'll see you on the next one. And don't forget, the best is yet to come.